Separation in ion exchange chromatography depends upon the reversible adsorption of charged solute molecules to immobilized groups of opposite charge. Most ion exchange experiments are performed in four main stages. Equilibration, sample application and wash, elution, and regeneration. The first step is the equilibration of the stationary phase to the desired start conditions. When equilibrium is reached, all stationary phase charged groups are associated with exchangeable counter ions, such as chloride or sodium. The second step is sample application and wash. The goal in this step is to bind the target molecules and wash out all unbound material. The sample buffer should have the same pH and ionic strength as the starting buffer in order to bind all appropriately charged proteins. In the third step, elution, biomolecules are released from the ion exchanger by a change in the buffer composition. A common way is to increase the ionic strength with sodium chloride or another simple salt in order to desorb the bound proteins. Proteins are desorbed relative to the number of charged groups on their surface. The final step, regeneration, removes all molecules still bound. This ensures that the full capacity of the stationary phase is available for the next run. A UV light water treatment system allows water to flow around a UV lamp, inactivating bacterial cells. Just like rays from the sun, this concentrated UV light can be dangerous, so the system includes a protective case. The UV radiation will not have a residual impact on the water. Ultraviolet, or UV light, uses radiation to disinfect. As water passes through a tube, it's exposed to ultraviolet light. When water is exposed to light for enough time, microbes in the water are exposed to UV radiation. This changes the DNA of microbial cells, killing them. Because cells have to be exposed to enough light, it's important to control flow rate and make sure all water is exposed for enough time. If water flows too quickly, UV light can't disinfect it. If water is too dirty or turbid, the UV light won't be able to pass through to work properly. Many UV systems will have an option to include a sensor that monitors how much UV light is passing through the water. This is an important feature and should be included in any treatment system to verify the water is not too dirty for effective treatment. If the system is not self-cleaning, clean the quartz glass tube regularly. UV light systems don't require a lot of maintenance, but it is critical that this glass tube is clean or the light won't reach the water properly. 
it can be hard to know if this tube is clean enough. This is another reason why systems with added UV sensors are highly recommended for monitoring. You validate the system when it is initially installed. Be sure to check water flow rates so that water is not moving too fast, and also check the cloudiness or turbidity of the water to make sure the UV light will be effective. Every time the system is operated, you will need to monitor it. You will want to make sure that the UV sensor is detecting adequate UV intensity through the water. This criteria will be established by the system manufacturer and is one reason why a sensor is important. Check to make sure the lamp is powered on and that the flow rate is set appropriately. Verify that your system is working as expected. Observe the employee monitoring the system. Calibrate the UV sensor per manufacturer recommendations. Collect water samples, send them to the lab for microbiological analysis, and review and document the results that the lab passes along. Reverse osmosis works by forcing water through a special plastic membrane sheet to remove compounds such as salts, organic compounds, microorganisms, viruses and pharmaceuticals. Rolls of membrane sheets are wound into cylinder-shaped elements. There are several elements inside each long pressure vessel. As water enters the vessel, it flows over the membrane surface as it moves from one end of the vessel to the other. The membrane layer is extremely thin. It allows water to pass through or permeate, while preventing other compounds from passing through. Membranes remove molecules based on their size, shape, and charge. Generally, contaminants larger than water molecules will not pass through, including most chemical contaminants and all microorganisms such as viruses and bacteria. Two streams of water are produced, Pure clean water or permeate flows across the membrane sheets and passes through the membrane layers to the inside core tube. Water that does not permeate becomes more highly concentrated with salts and other substances. This water is called concentrate. The pure permeate water flows out the core tube and one end of the pressure vessel and the concentrate water flows out another outlet. The concentrate water can then flow into other pressure vessels for the same process to happen again, so even more pure permeate water can be recovered. About 82% of all the source of water becomes purified water. <laughs>